Hello everyone, today we are going to learn the function Custom Deep Learning Classification in the Classification Module. This function supports the autonomous labeling of training samples and training of suitable models for point cloud data classification. The classification results obtained by this method can better meet the needs of different tasks and obtain higher classification accuracy. Since model training has certain requirements for computer performance, here we recommend the following computer performance. Configuration requirements. It is recommended to have an Intel i5 or i7 processor or above. 16 gigabytes of RAM or more is recommended. For the graphics adapter, it is recommended to have a dedicated NVIDIA graphics card with a memory of at least 8 gigabytes and a compute capability of 5.0 or higher. You can check the compute capability of your graphics card on the official NVIDIA website. System requirements. Microsoft Windows system, such as Windows 10 or 11. System configuration. Before running deep learning models, it is recommended to check the computer system and install the latest drivers for the graphics card. There are two ways to check the graphics card. Method one. Press the Windows plus R key combination to open the Run dialog box in Windows. Type CMD to open the Command Prompt window. In the Command Prompt window, type the NVIDIA SMI command and press Enter. This will display the maximum dedicated GPU memory and the highest supported CUDA version of your computer. If it doesn't display, please install the graphics card driver. The displayed information may vary depending on the computer you are using. In this computer, there is 12GB dedicated memory in the GPU and the highest supported CUDA version is 12.1. Method 2. Right click on the desktop and open the NVIDIA control panel. Click on system information and then components to view the highest supported CUDA version of the current graphics card driver. Click on display under system information to view the maximum dedicated GPU memory of the current graphics card. Note, if you have multiple graphics card, record the name of the best one and select it for calculations in the deep learning module. Currently, only single GPU calculations are supported. Next is the training environment configuration. Please download the training related software environment separately in order to use the model training function properly. The Deep Learning Application Download on the Start page or directly click Train Point Cloud Classification Model can be linked to the separate training environment download address. After downloading and unzipping, please copy the unzipped contents to the software installation directory. Once the preliminary groundwork is prepared, the custom Deep Learning Classification process can be carried out which is divided into three main steps, sample labeling, model training, and data classification. Firstly, please label the data samples, which can be done through the manual editing classification function inside the classification and the manual classification function inside the profile. For point cloud classes of urban roads, it is recommended to use the pre-trained point cloud semantic segmentation model in the software to perform initial classification. When it comes to labeling point cloud data, the process of creating labels from scratch can be quite difficult, while modifying categories can be relatively easier. There are four points to note during the labeling process. First, each point of each point cloud object must be labeled. Second, when dealing with boundaries, careful labeling is required. If points from other objects are assigned to the current object's category, it will significantly influence the training results. Third, only label the necessary categories. For example, if you want to classify cars, trees, ground points, and buildings in a point cloud during inference, you only need to label cars, trees, ground points, and buildings while leaving the rest of the points as uncategorized. Fourth, all labeling data must have consistent labels as inconsistent labels can negatively affect the training quality of the model. After labeling the point cloud, you need to activate the prepare point cloud training data function. Add the labeled sample data to both the training point cloud and validation point cloud. 
The recommended ratio between training and validation data is 8 to 2 or 7 to 3. So you need to split the labeled samples into two parts beforehand. Theoretically, the more labeled data used for training, the better the quality of the trained model. It is also advisable for the sample data to cover all the scenes to be classified. We recommend labeling at least a 100 meter by 100 meter range of samples as training data. Then select the feature information included in the processed point cloud data. The software supports four types of features, intensity, RGB, normal, and delta Z, also known as elevation relative to the ground. The software supports the calculation of normal for point clouds. In the tool module, activate the compute normal function and click OK. If you need to add normal to point cloud data, you need to pre-calculate normal for all labeled samples. The point cloud data I prepared here does not have normal or RGB features, so simply select intensity and delta Z. The width and height represent the dimensions of the sliced point cloud data. The larger these values are, the more data will be sliced, resulting in slower file reading speed. If the sliced data volume is too small, each training iteration may not have enough data, thus affecting the final accuracy. Suitable width and height values can improve the reading speed during training. The buffer represents the overlapping length of the sliced point cloud. Setting the overlap length can prevent the edge parts of the point cloud from affecting the training and validation results. The grid size represents the size of the voxel sampling grid. A larger value will result in sparser point clouds during training, while a smaller value will increase the computational load. It is recommended to use the default parameters, but you can customize them according to factors such as computer performance and the scenes being classified. Then click Next and select the categories to be ignored based on your needs. Note that the categories to be ignored are selected here, which means that if, for example, in the first step of sample labeling, I labeled 11 categories, but during training I do not want to classify a certain category, I can select that category's label as ignored here. Then select the folder to save the data. After clicking OK, the software will start preparing the data. After data preparation is complete, you can proceed to the model training stage. Activate the train point cloud classification model function and select one of the train.plyjson files from the folder saved in step two as the training data. It is recommended to keep the point cloud data features consistent with what was prepared. The training mode only supports GPU. There are two types of fully supervised models, point cloud semantic segmentation and sparse point voxel point cloud semantic segmentation. The first module or point cloud semantic segmentation is a fully supervised model suitable for fine classification of small scale point cloud data. It has relatively higher accuracy but slower training speed. The second mode is suitable for classifying large-scale objects. It has a faster training speed compared to PCSS. Since the demonstrated sample data only labeled large-scale objects, such as buildings and trees, we will choose the SPV-PCSS model. Batch size refers to the number of input data for each training. Its upper limit depends on the size of the GPU memory. Recommended batch sizes for different GPU memory sizes are shown in the figure. The maximum number of epochs need to be adjusted based on the changes in loss and IOU. The best value is when the loss no longer decreases and the IOU no longer increases. Based on experience, we recommend 100 batches. Finally, select the output path for the model. After clicking Next, Go to the training interface. The progress bar of the training process is displayed at the top of the interface, and the training log is displayed in the box below. After clicking start, the training will begin. During the training process, the changes in the curves can be observed to analyze the training situation. Normally, the loss will decrease with the increase of epoch, and generally stabilize after several tens or hundreds of epochs. 
the MACC value will increase continuously with the increase of epoch and finally stabilize. The MIOU will gradually increase and stabilize at a certain epoch. If the trends of the three curves do not meet above certain characteristics, or if the curve keeps oscillating, it indicates that there are problems with the training and you need to check for possible issues such as inconsistent annotations or very poor annotation accuracy in the training data. After training is completed, you can click Export Report to view the training report results. The report file is automatically saved in the project files. The report content is divided into three parts, the header, table of contents, and specific content. The header is named according to the training mode of this training. Clicking on the table of contents will take you to the corresponding location. The specific content includes the basic information of this training and the results after training. The project details table records the basic information of this training project, including the parameter settings for data preparation, training model, and inference results parameters. The training loss graph evaluates the trend of loss during training. The horizontal axis represents the step number, and the vertical axis represents the loss. The training accuracy graph evaluates the trend of prediction accuracy of the sampled point clouds during training with the change of steps. The horizontal axis represents the step number and the vertical axis represents the prediction accuracy. The accuracy value will continuously increase with the increase of steps and finally stabilize. The mean intersection over union or MIOU of the validation graph evaluates the trend of MIOU. The horizontal axis represents the epoch, and the vertical axis represents the MIOU value. The arrow in the graph indicates the maximum MIOU and when the epoch is 30. The average IOU reaches its maximum value. If the MIOU does not stabilize in the end, it means that the model still has potential for training. Please continue training by loading the pre-trained model until the MIOU stabilizes. The max intersection over union, or IOU, and epoch of each class table records the epoch at which the maximum IOU of each class occurs during the validation process and its corresponding information. If you are concerned about the classification accuracy of a certain class during inference, you can select the model saved at the epoch where the maximum IOU of that class corresponds based on this table. The mean intersection over union, or MIOU, for each class graph represents the MIOU of each class when the maximum MIOU is reached. The horizontal axis represents the class, and the vertical axis represents the MIOU. The percentage of training data for each class graph represents the percentage of points for each class participating in the training compared to the total number of points. The horizontal axis represents the class, and the vertical axis represents the percentage. Training has the best effect when classes are evenly distributed, so it is recommended to ensure class balance to improve classification accuracy of the annotated point cloud data as much as possible. The trained model is saved in the model folder. You can copy this folder to another computer with an NVIDIA graphics card and use LiDAR 360 MLS software to perform inference based on this trained model. The computer used for inference also needs to meet the basic configuration requirements. For model inference, activate the classify point cloud using trained model function, and then add the point cloud data to be classified. Set the block length, buffer, and batch size consistent with the saved settings during training. Select the model file maxiouval.pt that has been trained and has higher quality as the model path. If you are interested in a specific category, it is recommended to select the file corresponding to the epoch where the maximum IOU of that category occurs based on the training report. The log path can be remained as default. Click Next to go to the inference interface, and from top to bottom, there is a progress bar and log window. Click Start to start the inference, and after the inference is finished, 
the selected .light data file will be replaced. After reopening the point cloud after inference, you can view the effect after inference. This concludes the introduction of the custom deep learning classification function with fully supervised models in this video. Thank you all for watching.